Yesterday I was, um, I was talking about how I'm going to be going to this place and uh, there's probably going to be some drinking and uh, I don't drink and yada 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 yada. I think what I'm going to do is, I'll have, I'll have a glass or two. Because you know, I, like I said, I, I do drink like when I'm at a, like at a restaurant or something. So, you know, I think I can have a, I can nurse a little glass or something, so I'm gonna probably get like a bottle of gin and then mix something at that guy's house and the reason why I feel like uh, I wanna put more effort in terms of uh, trying to meet people halfway. I don't wanna be like uh, difficult. I understand, you know, you don't wanna f succumb to peer pressure or anything like that, but you know, if there is something I can do to kind of make feel, everyone feel at ease, you know, I can do it. Cause it's not like I strictly don't drink. If it doesn't matter, like I just strictly do not drink, then it is what it is. Maybe I shouldn't even be going to such things. Um, but I think the, the small gesture just to you know, make everyone feel a bit more comfortable. Cause I can just nurse a little glass. That'll be my, because I also want to, I want to watch June 2, is it June or D June? How do people say that? June? Dune, Dune, June, Sand Dune, Sand June, Sand Dune 2, I always say June, Dune sounds weird to me, June, Dune, June, June. Sand June, Sand Dune, anyway, I'm watching June 2. But now I'm being subconscious, self-conscious about it. It's not sounds like I'm saying the month June. The June. June. Hold on. June. 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 It sounds like you're saying. June. June. Why are you saying it so weird? You sing tune, tune, tune. Is it? It's, it's, it's kind of like these room for interpretation. Anyway, dune, sand dune, dune, dune two. I want to watch dune two afterwards, which means I have to drive. So when I leave that place, I'm gonna go to the cinema and watch dune two because I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. Which is, you know, what I realized because these days I don't watch movies. Guys, I used to go to the movies like. I used to go to the movies like religiously. I used to 
go every week or something, just sitting at the movies and enjoying my girlfriend. But now these days, I don't go anywhere because the movies coming out are so, so bad. It's just, it's exhausting for the soul, man, to watch bad movies. If you just find yourself falling asleep or just being frustrated because you paid so much money in the movie, so terrible. It's just, you eventually just get tired and you stop going. But I used to go a lot. It's actually great. I used to go so often. I spent so much money at the cinema. And I'm an idiot. I lost my club card. Man, the amount of free movies I could have watched if I kept that club card and just swiped every time I bought a ticket. But, uh, I wasn't very forward thinking. Anyway. So, to hear that June 2 is actually a good movie, it's not some mediocre trash. A lot of people are saying it's good, so I want to check it out. I'm tired of these bad movies, man. Oh my god. Someone help us, please. It's time to go watch it. See what's what's going on. Anyway, um, so, so I can't drink that much when I'm there. I just wanna like um, I wanna get along. I wanna get along. So I'll, it's a small gesture, and I can contribute because you know people are gonna be bringing all sorts of stuff. I can bring snacks. I don't have to bring alcohol necessarily, but you know, I just so that people feel like at ease. Hmm. Now I'm questioning that logic. I'm always questioning myself. It's hard to just settle on a thing. There's always a bit of conflict in here and in, in here as well. I'm like, mm, is that is that the right thing to do? Because on the one hand, I'm like. Isn't that just succumbing to peer pressure? No one's really pressuring. No one really said anything. It's just, just literally just me. So on the one hand, I'm like, you don't have to drink if you don't want to. On the other hand, I'm like, it's a gesture. It's it's, it's me showing that I'm willing to get along and um, I'm not trying to like, like be holier than thou or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Message the guy and said I'll bring a bottle of gin. So I'm a gin person. I like mixing gin with. Well, I don't. I don't like mixing myself. But when I go to a, like a restaurant or something, I'll order like. If I order a drink, it's usually something that, like gin and whatever the case may be. Like some drink that is gin. I don't really drink wine or this these other things. I don't like wine. I'm not a vodka person. Ooh, vodka? Do they serve vodka at restaurants? I'm sure like you can get some cocktail that has vodka in it. Anyway, I'm writing this, um, so, so obviously I'm writing this story, and one of the concepts I'm toying with is, um, It's a pirate novel, so one of the the main character is a pirate, and he saves this this uh, this missionary from uh, an island of, of cannibals. You know, he's he's uh, these savages who eat people and whatnot. So you know he's got this missionary on his ship, and it's kind of like a. The, 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 the dynamic I'm trying to establish is one where... Uh oh They have kind of have a little... some back and forths... And debates about morality and stuff like that. 
I don't want it to be too on the nose and heavy handed but you know the, the, they present that theme of like what is right versus what is wrong which is a relevant question for a pirate you know because pirates the whole thing is plundering and and, and killing and the yada 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 so I think this uh, that's what that character that missionary character brings to the tale of those moral questions um But it got me thinking about, someone said that all, all conflict is inherently uh, theological, which means you can't escape the, 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 the question of, of divine morality, of God. And every, every war, every conflict is inherently about that question, right? The reason being... Someone is like, you're right and I'm wrong, and vice versa. Well, I'm right, you're wrong, vice versa. So if you look at Israel, Palestine, Israel's like, oh, they attacked us on October 7th, and we're just we're just uh, acting in self-defense, which is <laughs> which is hilarious because it's uh, what, what, what the, I've never seen self-defense at this scale. But anyway, it's a story for another day. Um, and then Palestine would be like, yeah, but you, what about before October 7th, uh, all those decades prior of you doing this and that? So then the question is like, who's right, who's wrong, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't answer that question without an objective scale for morality. It's like an objective measure that isn't subjective. It's objective and doable. If it's objective, where is it coming from? Obviously, it has to come from a divine arbiter. You can't, you can't establish this, uh, universal framework for right and wrong uh, and expect people to, to go along with it if it isn't coming from a source beyond all of us if it's not just coming from a bunch of people because someone can just say no I'm not going to go along with it what you're going to do about it you know you can talk about international law and all this nonsense but these kids there are ways to bypass all that. People can be paid off. Like, people act in their own interests all the time. People will look the other way. Do you know how many international laws America has, has violated through its foreign policy? The things it did in Iraq and Afghanistan and all these places. Give me a break. So this nonsense of international law and establishing universal standards through secularism doesn't work. <clears throat> There have to be objective moral standards that uh, that are endowed to us by a creator. Now, that doesn't mean everyone will follow them. But I think when it's baked into the culture that these are things that are beyond us, you can't just wake up one morning and decide that you don't want to do that. You don't, you don't want to follow the law, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. When that's baked into the culture, you have more cohesion, you have more balance, there's less chaos. You minimize the damage. But when you start s suggesting that morality is subjective, well, more people are, are, are just uh, more likely to take matters into their own hands. We're seeing that right now. Uh, as you separate God from the moral consciousness of, of man, what we're seeing is, is, is uh, immorality becoming more and more pre prevalent. And it's hilarious, right? Because... People will acknowledge the existence of evil, but then they'll say it's subjective. It's like, what? Which one is it? Is, 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 is evil a real thing, or, or is it just made up, and it's up to you to decide what's evil and what's not? It's like, it's just ridiculous. Or it's just a game of power. Because, you know, you could say might makes right, so whoever's able to exercise their will that's the person that's right because they took their version of morality and, and imposed it on everyone else and if they have the power to do so who's to say they're wrong because there is no objective standard there's just your interpretation of reality so if you can exact your will then you've won the game and you can go along with that but I, I, it won't end well you know if you look at for the, like uh, the Soviet Union and Mao's China and Nazi Germany and all these sorts of places. It's a 
lot of that was going on. Doesn't work, man. At minimum, you have to be able to acknowledge that evil is a real thing, and it's not subjective. <laughs> People that uh, that are uh, sexually uh, assault picnies, you know, the, the the little ones. People that do that sort of stuff, like I don't think there's any sane person that can look at that and be like, ah, that's subjective. Like, it's evil. It's, it's, it's evil. It's just straight up evil, so this idea that, you know, morality is subjective is a bunch of nonsense. And it's not serving anyone. I think it just creates more and more chaos. But you know, the, the thing about human beings these days, uh, well, for eternity, actually. No, no, not for eternity, but, um, for as long as we've been here. The thing about human beings is we love to learn the hard way. We love to learn the hard way. We love to fuck around and find out. So, you know, in America, for example, you see all these uh, leader, uh, uh, soft on crime bills where they, where they, they refuse to, to draw hard lines when it comes to morality and, and crime and stuff like that. And they say, you know, the criminals are just starving. Oh, we need to feel bad for them. There's no need to, like, arrest them. Oh, and, and they get let out on bail, without bail, actually. Get let out very easy. Like, there's a lot of crime in a lot of these places because they have this attitude of, like, things are nuanced, morality is subjective. The person is... He's stealing and robbing and shooting and, and looting because, you know, what, what choice does he have? Yeah, well, look where that leads. You've got these repeat offenders, right, who, who keep getting in and out of prison. They keep getting let out without bail, and then eventually they go and they kill someone. That's happened multiple times. I told you about the story of the people that dismembered someone and end might be multiple people and then and, and flung their body parts across this forest and then they were taken to jail this happened very recently but then they were let out with, without bail because they're like oh we can't I don't know I think they said lack of evidence or something I, I, there was plenty of evidence I think they found blood in the sink of the house and stuff like that like there's plenty of plenty of evidence there's the guy that was recently here on the Joe Rogan podcast uh, he was someone who had been let out of prison. Um, I'm not sure exactly what his crimes were. I think the, the violent robberies and stuff like that. He'd done some, some crazy stuff in the past. And then they let him out and then he he killed someone in, an, in their apartment and then chopped them up. He killed someone in their apartment and chopped them up and people saw him, like the neighbors would see him coming in and out of that apartment with with bags and, and and cases and stuff. Well, actually, he'd be going to the apartment with bags and cases. And like, what is he doing? And we heard screaming and we heard gunshots. And turns out that uh, he left the guy's head in the freezer. So he cut off his head and left it in the freezer. And and the, the, his body parts were in bags and stuff. And because he wanted to like get rid of the body, or so I don't know. It's complicated. But anyway. They let him out. They keep letting out criminals. Obviously, uh, that that girl that was killed by that uh, illegal immigrant, he beat her to death and disfigured her face and body. And he had been arrested on on, on violent charges, and he'd done some stuff. And he'd been let out without bail. Because he was in New York, he was arrested in New York, and then they let him out, and then he went to Georgia and killed that girl. So we keep seeing this pattern of criminals being released continuously, multiple times, in and out of the system, and then they go on to to kill people because the country's developing this philosophy that's kind of like you feel bad for criminals because it's all subjective. Right? Oh no, poor criminal, like. His life was hard, that's why he's doing what he's doing. Instead of saying, now we have an objective standard, 
if you commit this crime, you will be punished for it. No ifs, ands, or buts. Sorry, we don't care about your life story. You shouldn't be doing that. Because morality is objective. Period. When you're unable to understand this basic truth, it leads to all sorts of problems. So it's foolishness, man. You know, the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When you don't fear God, you become foolish. You start doing foolish things. Suggesting that morality is just, uh, you know, it's up to you to determine what that is. It's foolish. It's not true. Right and wrong is not a matter of subjectivity. It's, this is a very objective thing, right and wrong. Obviously, there are situations where someone can be caught between a rock and a hard place and the choices they have to make are complicated and we can acknowledge that, but that doesn't change the objective standard in terms of um, uh, hurting others needlessly, taking things that are not yours. I don't want to use the R word because YouTube, you know, you know how YouTube is with some of these things. Like we know, we all know these objective standards that we all apply in our own lives. And the same people that say morality is um, subjective. If I, if I were to walk up to you in the street and just slap you across the face for no reason, you'd be pissed. And you want, you want to lay charges against me? You want to act like I did something wrong to you? I'll just... If I can get away with it, did I do anything wrong? If I can just lie and say it wasn't me, if I, if I put on a mask or something, I don't know, and I just managed, oh, I get, got great lawyers or something, and I and I get away with the crime. Have I actually done anything wrong? Or did I just wield my power appropriately and uh, you just got unlucky? Stop walking around not expecting slaps like that like be more vigilant next time buddy you know what i'm saying that's where that sort of logic leads it leads to all sorts of chaos people just acting up without without really any real consequences and we're seeing it but we're seeing a world without consequences because if morality isn't objective it's subjective why, why should people be punished why should you punish someone for doing something that isn't inherently wrong it's not right, it's not wrong, it's just is what it is. And we're seeing that play out. Like I, I just gave you examples of people that are committing crimes continually and being let off the hook for them. You can dismember someone and scatter their body parts across a forest and be let out without bail. That's insane. Do you know how dangerous that is? Do you know how much of a risk to public safety that is? What if the person, because you know, they got they got ankle monitors and stuff, but still, like these could be cycles, dude. They can be like, I want to get a few more bodies before I go to prison. Because you know, they're gonna go back and face trial again. But imagine the damage they could do while they're still out and about. They could be on house arrest and stuff, but still, man. Again, you don't know these people. They could genuinely be like, let me just get one more body throw me back in prison the next person I see I'm gonna kill them they can do that in prison but they're, they're, they're contained they're not in the general public they're not harming the, the, the prison is for the people that just should not be mingling with, 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 with uh, the general public because they're dangerous that's why we should keep those, those, those people but when you lose objective standards why should you have prisons? Why? What's the point? There's no moral reasoning for it, of course, this morality is subjective. 
Therefore, it's, it's, it's really meaningless. You, you apply your own meaning, your own interpretation of the world to define that, right? So I say, why are people even funding this operation, this, this experiment called prisons? And then, you know, we're starting to venture into this concept that uh, children can consent to permanent sex surgeries and stuff like that. Which is, which is preposterous, they're kids. Bro, the things I used to think when I was a kid that I, I, I genuinely thought, like, I'm, I'm so convinced of this, yada, yada, yada. I can't imagine life being any other way. Like, this is this is how I think now, and this is what I'm going to do in the future. Yeah. The, the, the amount of times my mind has changed, even as an adult, even as an adult, you know how many adults get tattoos and then regret their tattoos? Imagine, as a child, your mind is still forming, hormones are raging, there's all sorts of things going on in life. It's a very confusing experience you're having. The world is forming in front of you as your mind forms. To make decisions like I'm gonna chop off body parts, Permanently. I'm going to take drugs that pause puberty. There's no such thing as pausing puberty. It's called stunting your growth. Well, we're not like, it's not like playing a video. If you're starting puberty, let's say at like 12 years old, and you take puberty blockers, it's not like you press resume at 16. Like you change your mind and you press resume. No. You've stunted your growth. You're never going to be the same. Your development will not be the same as everyone else's. It's such a lie, dude. And people, for some reason, think that that's even possible. This idea that you can pause puberty. If you just think for one second, you'd be like, yeah, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. It's not possible. That's not how the body works. But yeah, when you make morality subjective, you can do that to children. You can experiment on kids. Even though there's no real long-term study for any, any of this stuff to suggest that it actually works. It doesn't work, it doesn't work by the way. Um, evidenced by the, the, the sheer amount of people that have expressed regret. And there are many others, I'm sure, who, who feel regret, but will never say it. Imagine admitting, admitting, admitting that uh, you've made a terrible mistake and you shouldn't have done that. It takes courage to do that. But anyway, when you when, when morality is subjective, you can do all sorts of things like that. But when there's an objective standard that says, these are kids, leave them the fuck alone, you psycho. This is weird, this page is... Like, these two pages. You see what I mean? They're like joined at the bottom. Like they're not separated. At the top they are separated, but at the bottom. That's an old book. Probably made all sorts of errors like that back in the day. Yeah, you might find it in some new books, I guess. Anyway. The point I'm trying to make is there are all sorts of things that, all sorts of issues that become very prevalent when you start toying with this idea that morality is subjective. You can get away with all sorts of things. You can you can genuinely get away with murder. Literally. Um, in Canada, you know, they're, they're, they're loosening their restrictions on this idea of assisted suicide or the assisted death, medically assisted uh, death or something like that. And if you if you if you if you don't want to live anymore, you you're depressed, you're this, you're that. They can give you drugs and kill you. And it's a slippery slope because now they're they're saying they're increasing the amount of. Uh, Factors that can qualify you for medically assisted suicide. And so, you know, 
if you if you've got some sort of mental illness or whatnot, or even if you just claim to have one, stuff like that, you know, they can assess you. But how rigorous are these assessments? I think they have this 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 position of like we'll believe we'll believe you. What 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 if what you tell us, we'll believe that. And if someone's feeling miserable, they can they can kill themselves. In a society that had its head on the right way, they'll be like, that's terrible. These people need help. They don't need to be killed. That's not the answer. Life is precious. There have been many people who wanted to kill themselves and then came out of it and were like, whoa, I'm glad I didn't do it. Because, yeah, life is precious. So if they just get the right help, they can start to value their lives again. The answer is never just killing yourself. That's never the answer. But we're inching towards a future where people can be like, eh, if you want to kill yourself, kill yourself. No, it's okay. We're getting closer to that. People are slowly developing that attitude of like, yeah, off yourself, it's fine. Die. Die. It's okay. No, it's not. No, 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 no. No. Don't do it. But again, when morality is subjective, Who's to say what's wrong, what's right, man? You can do all sorts of things. The 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 the, the very dark places that that's going to lead. If we just keep letting this slide, oh my god, bro! All sorts of uh, problems can emerge from that. But anyway, you heard it here. Don't say you never know, want. You must know that Jane is here. Someone told you. Pray for America, pray for the world, pray for the Canada, that, that crazy place, pray for the UK, pray for South Africa, pray for the world that we sort ourselves out. Because we're tripping. We're tripping balls. Anyway, get out of here. I like to pray at the end of all my videos. Some of you people need it. Ah, uh, dear God, thank you for this individual watching this run. I thank you for making them whole and unique and guiding them on a path towards peace, prosperity, and purpose. Purpose, 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 purpose. Thank you for blessing this individual, the wonderful people in their life who love them and take care of them and bring the absolute best out of them. And thank you for maintaining the ones that are there to do the same thing. Thank you for uh, blessing this person with the spirit of gratitude so they can give thanks for all the wonderful things in their life. By giving thanks, they can find peace, contentment, and attract even more blessings, even more blessings, blessings, blessings. Let your presence be felt in this person's life so they know that you're God, that you're real, that you love them, that you're taking care of them, that you're always going to be there for them. Good health, long life, and happiness of this individual and everyone they care about in your mind. Amen. Pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 amen.